Hey, thanks for joining me for case of the week number four, duplicated collecting system. I'm Dr. Dan Koval. Let's take a look at this case. So here we have a VCUG, avoiding cystourethrogram. There's a catheter entering the bladder here, and we've instilled contrast, and that's outlining this large rounded filling defect at the right bladder base. That filling defect persists as the bladder fills on this oblique view, and then it's becoming slightly less apparent as the bladder continues to fill. And once the bladder is completely filled, we actually don't see it well at all. So that's typical of a ureteral seal, which is an abnormal dilation of the distal ureter that often bulges into the urinary bladder. And this was a two-week-old patient that had prenatal hydronephrosis in a suspected ureterocele. Now, as the examination continues, notice that we now have reflux of contrast into this right renal collecting system, and it's reaching the calyces here with some slight blunting. So that would be typical for grade four vesicoureteral reflux. Now, if you notice, this appearance of the collecting system looks similar to a drooping lily, which is fairly specific for a duplicated collecting system. So this would be the lower pole moiety, and the upper pole moiety, which we actually can't see, is dilated and hydronephrotic. And because it's enlarged, there's mass effect against this lower pole moiety, giving it an appearance of a drooping lily. Now we can see this upper pole moiety on CT or ultrasound. So this patient had an ultrasound showing this dilated hydronephrotic upper pole moiety. There's that lower pole, which has some fullness, probably due to the grade four reflux. And here's the bar parenchymal tissue between these two moieties. We can see that here as well. There's some fullness of the lower pole. I should note though that patients who have reflux don't always have an abnormal ultrasound of the kidneys. They might have a normal looking kidney and VCUG is a much more specific modality to detect VUR. Here's a color Doppler image again showing that hydronephrotic upper pole moiety and we can see that even better on the sagittal cine clip. Look at how blunted these calyces are for that upper pole moiety and we can see that the ureter is coming off here. It's quite dilated. And then there's a lower pole moiety here with some fullness of that collecting system. Let me just bring this back a bit to show you. It's a nice look at the papilla, the apices of the medullary pyramids bulging into the collecting system that we can sometimes see on ultrasound. Here's a transverse view of that upper pole moiety. Again, it's dilated hydronephrotic, and we can see that very nicely on this sagittal static view. The dilated upper pole moiety extending down into the dilated ureter, which balloons out here to about 1.4 centimeters. Again, look at that normal lower pole moiety with just a little fullness. And let's follow this ureter down so you can see how dilated and tortuous it is. Here it is approaching the urinary bladder, extremely dilated. And then as we reach the ureterovesicular junction down here, it's 1.2 centimeters. And then notice the bulging of the distal ureter, the ureteral seal entering the urinary bladder on the sagittal view. We can see that expanding out here and then even better on the transverse view, this distal ureter here ballooning out into the bladder representing a ureteral seal, quite large, filling up the bladder lumen. So this is what we were seeing as a filling defect on that early filling phase of the VCUG. Sometimes color Doppler can help you when evaluating ureteral seal because you might see a color Doppler jet as urine is exiting the ureteral seal, but not in this case. Also, ureteral seals may fluctuate in size when you evaluate them in real time as they empty and fill. This one was relatively fixed. Here's a linear view showing the same appearance of the ureteral seal. And then as we look at this transverse cine clip, really get a good sense of how large this ureteral seal is, filling the bladder lumen here. And then notice the distal ureter here is quite large, dilated as it's entering into the ureteral seal. Now I want to draw your attention to the orthotopic lower pole moiety, which we can actually see here. This is the distal ureter. And then below that, inferiorly, and then also medially, we have this ectopic ureteral seal from the upper pole moiety. So you can see how this orthotopic lower pole ureter, is, since it's adjacent to the dilated ureter of the upper pole moiety right here, can cause some mass effect along with the ureteral seal and disrupt the normal function of that lower pole, which makes it more likely, more susceptible to undergo reflux. So let's just review some key points for a duplicated collecting system. So the findings I was just describing to you are known as the Weigert-Meyer rule, which you can remember by the handy mnemonic dummy, <laughs> D-U-M-I. So with duplex kidneys and complete ureteral duplication, the ureter draining the upper pole moiety tends to insert ectopically into the bladder, medially and inferiorly to the ureter draining the lower pole, which is what we just saw on that transverse cine clip. So the lower pole moiety tends to insert orthotopically, which means it inserts normally. The upper pole moiety often ends as an ectopic ureteral seal, as in this case. Now the upper pole moiety tends to obstruct and become hydronephrotic due to this ectopic ureteral seal, whereas the lower pole moiety is more likely to undergo reflux due to mass effect from this adjacent ureteral seal. And you can see that upper and obstructs both start with vowels, whereas lower and reflexes both start with consonants. So you can remember vowels and consonants stay together. That may help you to remember this phenomenon, depending on how much you like or dislike grammar. <laughs> 
Now that obstructed upper pole moiety will cause mass effect in the drooping lily sign because the lower pole moiety gets inferiorly displaced. And this is kind of an old school term, or perhaps I should say time honored sign <laughs> that we see more with fluoroscopic urography like intravenous pilograms and BCUGs. Because with those studies, you're only seeing that lower pole, the upper pole, which is obstructed and hydronephrotic, you're not seeing because no contrast is excreted into it or refluxing up into it. So we'll see that upper pole better on ultrasound or CT urography. Hey, thanks for watching Case of the Week Duplicated Collecting System. You can catch these lectures each week by subscribing to our podcast, YouTube channel, or by following us on social media. Until next time, radiology is life.